Tonight here at Fox 13, we have an unusual case of Florida justice. A Central Florida man won his appeal and a judge set him free. So all is good, right? Yeah. After turning his life around, the state now wants him back behind bars in prison. Yes, they do. And Craig Patrick breaks it down for us tonight in We the People. I love you. I'm sorry this is happening to you. I don't want to bust her window out. You better catch it. This is the story of a mom named Stephanie, two little boys, Robbie and Lance, <laughs> who aren't so little anymore, and their father, Robert Woodall. He does everything for us. Okay, Robbie. He promised to never leave them again. Ooh. Say hey. I hope I was able to be a good influence. Actually, they left him. 12 years ago, Stephanie gave birth to Lance, developed postpartum depression, left Robert, and took the boys off to Texas. I washed them out the window, and uh, as they turned the corner, I just broke out and cried. And So his buddies took him out drinking, and on Christmas Eve 2004, he made the biggest mistake of his life. So everybody says they don't think they're drunk, but yeah, I definitely had a few, few uh, drinks in the club. He got in a tiff with some men in an elevator. A security guard broke it up, but he found them again. He bashed one man in the face, broke his nose, and pulled a gun on another. Pointed the gun at the ground and fired two shots. I figured that would stop them, and it did. A bullet ricocheted off the ground and struck the man's ankle. The victim with a broken nose asked the court to show a degree of clemency to Robert for the sake of his kids. But the judge had no flexibility for aggravated assault with a firearm. That's an automatic 20 years in prison. They don't do that anymore. The courts later struck part of Florida's 1020 life law, and state lawmakers changed it more to give judges more discretion. And after Robert Woodall served 11 years... Ooh, good spiral. Who taught you how to throw like that? A judge used his discretion to set him free. And he made a decision in that courtroom and, and set me free. And I got to come home. In January 2016, the judge ruled there had been an error in his conviction and released him on appeal. Because he came home telling the kids he would never go back. He would never do anything like that to leave. And that was my promise to them. And he worked hard to keep that promise. I get to be with my family. I get to be a father. He poured his savings into a lawn business, then poured his sweat into keeping it going. And after yard work, he found volunteer work. He's got us going to church. He's got us, you know, involved in the schools. And along the way, the boy's grades and spirits picked up. He teaches us stuff about, like, God and how to do stuff and basically, like, how to live. Jam on the middle. This would be the story of a man who redeemed himself and brought his family back together. Go to your mom. Except for a twist. <laughs> It just can't happen. It just can't. I don't even want to think about what to say because it just can't happen. While the state changed 1020 life, the changes don't apply to people who had already been sentenced. And State Attorney General Pam Bondi's office said 20 years means 20 years. Her office convinced an appeals court the judge had no discretion to show discretion. So the court is compelling you to serve nine more years on a law that's since been deemed unconstitutional that the governor has changed. Yeah. Correct. Which brings us to this. That's for uh, people with the higher pay grade than me. The man who spent 16 months in freedom showing how he's a changed man got nine more years in prison. Attorney General Pam Bondi would not talk to us about this case, nor would anyone in her office. Her spokeswoman replied, no one is available, though we've been asking since August. But while Bondi won't touch this one, there are still two sides to every story. And this one started long before Woodall's crime. We had record high crime in Florida. When State Senator Jack Ladvala helped pass the 1020 life law nearly 20 years ago. What we did is we pro produced 46 year low in our crime rate to make our families, our neighborhoods safer. Remember, the court did convict Woodall of aggravated assault with a firearm, and he did bash a man in the face on Christmas Eve, and the court only struck part of 1020 life, and he did get 20 years. I don't see any particular reason to retroactively lighten the load. While Lockvall is not familiar with Woodall's case, he says changes in the mandatory sentencing law should not apply to those who were already sentenced. I mean, these are bad guys. We took them off the street. Uh, and I think they need to stay off the street. Of course, some like Senator Darrell Roussan disagree. 
I think it's wrong for the state to do that. And that's driving this ongoing debate over mandatory minimums. We must get away from the mentality of purely mandatory sentencing imprisonment. That's why we need to give judges a certain amount of discretion. As for Robert, no matter how you feel about him, his victim had asked for some clemency for his family. But as Robert and the judge heard Stephanie's cries cut through the walls, under state law, the judge had no clemency to give. Yes, but he's not the you bad think guy. You stuck it to him. You think you stuck it to him. You stuck it to him. It's us. You, you did this to the us. Other side. That's who you stuck it to. That may give lawmakers something to think about on both sides as they consider what judges consider in handing out Florida justice, while Robert Woodall's promise to his kids may have to wait until long after they're grown. And uh, that I'll always love them, and then I'll never stop trying to come home to them. Greg also tells us the state Supreme Court has recently denied Woodall's appeal.